Thanks, Deputy Mayor. Councilor Zamprogno. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I wanted to be towards the end because I was very genuinely interested in the, the spectrum of, of views here. So I want to say that I'm in favour of Councillor Calvert's motion. I was not a fortnight ago. I was in support generally of the package of reforms to our committee structures, but I drew a bright line uh, relating to the status of the Heritage Committee. And I want to thank Councillor Calvert and uh, other councillors for being prepared to reconsider on that point. I think that there's way too much pearl clutching going on here because ultimately this could be an experiment that runs for all of about eight months and then there will be an election and the disposition of the new chamber may be different. So if this new structure kicks in in February and there's an election in September, that gives us eight months in which to conduct this experiment and to see whether it yields a benefit to the decision making um, of our chamber. And I'm, I'm happy to conduct that experiment. If the next council is of a different disposition, that's perfectly within their rights to declare the experiment a failure, but at least we'll know at that point whether this new structure improves uh, our decision making or not. Now, as it relates to the Heritage Committee, I'm going to take the magnanimous view that the change of heart has been because of the quite overwhelming uh, support that I've received and which has been relayed to the other councillors about the value of the Heritage Committee. And, and I want to recognise Neil Renaud from the Carlo Shire Family History Group, from Peter Sharpley from the Hawkesbury Historical Society, from Carol Eds from the Hawkesbury Chapter of the National Trust, from David Griffiths and Margaret Wyborn, Marguerite Wyborn, from the Carol John Comilori Historical Society, from Frank Holland, and from Cheryl Ballantyne and Jenny Lloyd, none of whom, I might add, are making self-serving submissions on this question because they are already members of that committee. Those people are not members of the Heritage Committee, but represent really serious um, uh, organisations that have a stake in the preservation and promotion of our heritage and history here in the Hawkesbury and sounded the alarm about the loss of that expertise. In addition to that, there were representations I, re I did receive from members of the committee and a joint letter from all of the community members of that committee. And I think the best passage from that says that um, the, the, the Hawkesbury the Heritage Advisory Committee really does bring together the best qualified and informed group of citizens on matters of history and heritage at no cost to council. A point that I've made along the way is that if we had to pay for these people's advice, we couldn't afford it. And I did think of the Heritage Committee as something separate and something special. And because the motion, the motion before us now has the ability to um, preserve the Heritage Committee, then I am generally in support of the package of reforms. What I would say along the way, though, is to dispel a couple of red herrings. One is, I, I don't share the view that these committees are being consolidated or, or disparaged because they are seething hotbeds of activism. I don't mind a committee acting as the conscience of council, and if they occasionally come up with a, with a contrarian or challenging view. I don't say that as an act of sedition, I say that as them doing their job. And I'm perfectly happy for all councils to receive frank advice from the community that might occasionally challenge the orthodoxy of, of, of council or get under the skin of individual councillors. I think we're all big enough to take that on board. I'm also committed to these committees having an ecumenical spread of councillors as their members. And I'm also committed to if the agenda items for these council uh, uh, committees have to run the gauntlet of being put on the business paper and then running through the chamber so that we ensure that what those, counts, those committees do is aimed at our uh, needs, uh, our, de our decision-making needs in the chamber, is that I will generally be disposed to permit any item that would otherwise be put on the agenda by staff, for example, to come through unless a very compelling reason was offered why it was irrelevant to um, put before one of those committees. 
So on that basis, I think this is something that we can support and then see how it goes and then reconsider in September. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Zamprogno. Uh, 